Okadi here. Today we are looking at the Cyclone Slayer. This is a Cyclone of Tumult Stampede Slayer that has a nice large AoE, a very smooth gameplay, and a very good staged progression on the gear and the skills on the character. We're going to be looking at the low budget, mid budget, upper mid budget, the current build that we had live on the game for the videos, and the high budget as well. So let's take a look at our tiering on this build. All right, low budget starts off one to two div. We just we just slotted nothing but unique items in here to make it easier to gear and purchase on softcore trade. Now you don't have to use all of these unique items. You just have good rare items in every slot. And if you're a solo cell found character. You're going to have to just get good items in each slot. There's nothing complex here, but this just makes it easier to gear out a softcore trade character in a very, very low budget. It does 1 million DPS at about a 1 to 2, 1 to 2 div entry level. It has a 12k max fizz hit, a 30k effective health pull, and very solid layer of defenses. Um, and then we're just using generic flasks in here to get it going. Now, from a skill perspective, we are using Cyclone of Tumult, Bound of Trinity, Inspiration, and Ice Bite. We need Ice Bite in here in order to make sure that we trigger Trinity with the Axe uh, Debian's Dirge. We are putting all of this in these gloves that have added lightning damage, and then we're using a Kaom's Heart for the extra life. And Debian's Dirge is our Axe right here. You do not need a six link on this. You can just get a cheap Debian's Dirge. Nothing complicated here. Now. We are going to need to Enduring Cry once every cooldown on this to keep up the buff from Debian's Dirge. You'll just be Enduring Crying on cooldown. And then we're running Determination, Blood and Sand, and Anger. We are sending in Blood Stance for the extra damage here. And then Blood Rage for Frenzy Charges and extra attack speed, Leap Slam, and Poacher's Mark on hit. And then we are reserving Precision with Arrogance. As you can see, we do have 4,300 life with 3,900 unreserved and very solid accuracy on the build as well. Now, on the passive tree for the build, we are running precise techniques, so it is very important to keep your accuracy above your life. And everything else on the tree is fairly self-explanatory. We won't go into a whole lot of detail here. Make sure that you do get your frenzy charges on markup here so you can keep up your frenzy charges while you're spinning around, and especially versus bosses. And then, of course, we have our double disciples right down here. So the mid-budget is 10 div entry. We're getting Rakiata's Dance, which is the majority of our investment here. And then we've swapped over to a rare helm, rare gloves. These are these are just looking for life, int, resistances on these things. Um, on your helm, you can slam an intelligence essence into it until you get a good life roll and maybe some resistances on it. On the Wyvern Scale Gloves, you're just going to slam an attack speed essence into it until you get good resistances and some armor and evasion on it. And then benchcraft damage while leeching onto it. We're still using a Kaom's Heart. We switched over to Stampede Boots with high voltage instead of uh, just regular Stampede Boots. These are Blight Crafted Boots, so you can use oils to anoint these. We're using a Yoke of Suffering here along with a Taming. We're using a Praxis Power to keep our mana under control with the Cyclone. And a Magnate Studded Belt just for the resistances, the strength, and a little bit of double damage. If you've got a better belt here, you're welcome to use whatever you want. We have included a tincture into our flask rotation now, and we are using an interrogation down here, a calamitous feed, the fury martial prowess cluster jewel, and then just some offensive jewels, whatever you can get a hold of, something with damage on it, something with corrupted blood on it. Our impossible escape is going to put you over into iron grip. These are usually like 50 C right now, so they're very cheap. This gets you access to path of the warrior, constitution, and berserking as well. So that impossible escape is a very, very strong tool for us to use to get some more damage as well as some more life. On our skills, Cyclone of Tumult, Determination, Flesh and Stone, and Skitter Bots, Precision and Arrogance, Blood Rage and Leap Slam, and Assassin's Mark on hit now instead of the Poacher's Mark, along with a Castman Damage Taken Molten Shell just as an additional defensive layer because we are running a little bit behind on gearing at this point in the build. Now, Cyclone and Tumult has changed a little bit. We have added Pulverize, Volatility, and Elemental Damage with Attacks are still on here with Ice Bite and Trinity. Uh, Pulverize just gets us a little bit better area of effect for Cyclone, which is very good and does increase our damage. Volatility is a flat damage increase. 
and then ice bite is necessary to keep us inside of trinity on the build again you need overlapping elements here and so we want to make sure that we're keeping our lightning and our cold up so that we're doing the most damage possible with the trinity and then fire damage is irrelevant because we're going to overlap the lightning and the cold right here now our tree is changed a little bit but this is roughly the same we have included the cluster jewel down here and we have picked up fortify over here because again we need a little bit of bolstering of our defenses because the gearing itself is still falling a little bit behind now on our upper mid budget our items are not vastly changed our build is not vastly changed but the biggest changes to move from the mid budget to the upper mid budget are a really good hammer and a really good armor both of these are craftable the hammer is craftable by getting a fractured base and then slamming fizz essences into it and this one might be a little bit too good for you in this budget so we can tone it down a little bit just so that people have something that's more attainable because you're probably not going to be running a 29 quality mace and then you're probably not going to be hitting this much fizz damage on the mace when you're crafting it yourself and then maybe this roll is a little bit lower here so we'll tone down the mace a little bit um, maybe we don't have the increased critical strike chance right here and we'll just call this guy an upper mid budget mace so this, is, this is something that's perfectly attainable you can probably buy this it's a 912 dps mace and then you can craft on the enchant on it but this is one of your pricier points of entry into the build now with the upper mid budget pile driver and our crafted lamellar we're at 57 million dps very very solid dps on this build at this stage of gearing again the pile driver is a fractured base essence crafts of fizz damage and you're just digging for a big fizz or if you get a good attack speed roll on the back of it then you can just go ahead and craft on a bench crafted fizz damage and then on our armor over here this is a hunter warlord item and so it's easy to craft you grab a hunter item with crit on it you grab a warlord item with socket attacks have minus 15 total cost you awaken a morb together and then you bench craft with uh your suffix is going to be changed ca reroll caster mods and that'll throw the curse on there and then you get whatever other mobs you have on it at that point now this one has spell suppression on it as well as a good armor evasion roll and then it bench crafted the armor percentage on there uh, but you could have other affixes on there as well that are different this one is not expecting spell suppression cap that's in the higher levels of the build so get what you can on this armor piece right here now once you get up into the current build we are a lot more focused on getting everything put together we are spell suppression capped we are ailment immune we have better chaos res we have better armor and evasion rating we have a higher life total and we do a lot more damage now this build in the current build you could probably put it together for somewhere between 150 and 250 div depending on how you good you are at crafting these pieces and depending on what the market looks like whenever it's finally time to put all this together the skills on this build are largely unchanged we're still using cycle and tumult pulverize we've added awakened melee fizz damage fizz to lightning trinity and elemental damage with attacks we are still running Determination, Flesh and Stone, and Lightning Skitter Bots. We're still running Precision with Arrogance, Enduring Cry with Urgent Orders, Assassin's Mark on Hit, and Blood Rage and Leap Slam. Now we have added in Conditionals. And so same thing with the upper mid-budget build. We added in Conditionals here. And these Conditionals allow you to do more damage versus bosses. And so we added Berserk as an option for dumping rage and doing more damage to the boss. Vengeful Cry, which allows us to halt our rage loss and get a larger maximum rage for a period of time after taking a savage hit. Ball Haste and Vol Smite for additional cooldowns and more duration on everything so that it lasts longer. And then because our armor has an additional curse, we are running Punishment as our additional curse, which allows us to execute the bosses much faster. Now I will say do not use Berserk unless you have Vengeful Cry up. If you use Berserk without Vengeful Cry up, you will just be dumping rage and not doing extra damage. And so you want to make sure that you're not, you're using these two together. The Vol Haste and the Vol Smite, you can just use at your convenience versus tanky rares or from versus bosses. You can even just slot on a regular smite on your bar if you want to boost your damage while you're just running around. There's not a big difference between the Vol Smite and the regular smite. It's just the duration of the buff that you get. 
with more duration it's 12 seconds with ball smite it is six, it's six seconds with regular smite and so if you don't like pushing buttons don't use these we are still doing 48 million dps without any conditionals at all but if you want to maximize the character and have some extra buttons to push while you're running around these are all great ways to do that now once you get up into the high budget we're just looking at perfect maces a replica abyssus with power charges on it and pocketed cost a really really good armor which is what we've had in, in the previous builds anyway uh, we are looking at some very very strong conversion gloves to maximize the damage capabilities of it this is something we're using in the previous current build as well uh, stampede again with corruptions on it and so all of this gear down the line on the high budget build is is just about perfect now if you're able to get all this put together it's probably going to be in the 600 to 750 div range to get it all put together but you're looking at about 300 million cyclone dps we still have a great max fizz hit a relatively good effective health pull a tremendous amount of bleach on hit and a very very strong clear on this character as well as high boss killing and so pick your poison on your budgets build your character up i will say if you are starting this as a fresh character start at a budget that is under what you have available and then build up to it rather than just trying to slam into the upper mid budget with 50 div and then missing some key components all of these builds have a a lot of interlocking pieces and if you don't get them all, you're going to be bouncing over to my channel saying, hey, your build's not working. What can I do to fix it? And so make sure you're doing something that fits your budget and what your play style is. And then you can build up from there. All these items can be resold if you buy something. And then in the next tier, it's not something that you're using in that tier. Now, as always, if you have any questions, leave comments down below or come by Twitch. I spend 75% of my stream just fixing people's builds and helping them figure out what they can do to upgrade and, and what they can do to make their character better. And I really enjoy that. It's my favorite part of the streaming experience and it's my favorite part of the building experience. So don't hesitate to come by and ask for help. The only stupid question is a question that you didn't ask. Other than that, thank you very much. Peace out. Y'all have a wonderful day. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching the video. As always, come by Twitch if you have any questions or check out this video that YouTube thinks you like or check out our latest upload over there. Peace.